Hi students and welcome back. So we're going to do now question 10b, which is the second part of the number, episode 3. Remember in episode 2 we did the data source document and now we can continue with the second part of the main document, which is basically the letter. And we're going to have to do certain things to that letter and most importantly, insert large values. Alright, so the first question of question 10b Open the document saved as trust monies from your student folder. So there is a student folder attached to this document. And if I go to the student folder, um, let's continue to just go and open my student folder. And there we go. So in the student folder, there is a document called Trust Monies and if I open up this document this is what the document looks like and I have to go and do certain things to this document so going back to my question paper I've done number one number two use the insert date function to insert today's date so in the document the first thing there is insert today's date four. so I'm going to just delete this information Insert so that I can use the date and time function and click on it. And what they mean, what I mean by full date is basically day, full month, and year. Normally, students, um, if a question paper is not specific, like in this one, it's really specific, but normally it's not that specific. You can actually just choose any of the options available, but I, I always like it. What you can do is you can set this to update automatically so whenever you open this document in the future it's going to update it's going to use the, the, that specific date of that time that you are opening it up with so if i open up the document tomorrow again for example it's going to be tomorrow's date um, if you use this one so i'm just going to click okay Today is the 26th of September 2020. Next question. Use the sorry, did that change the font to Century Gothic size 10 for the whole document? Right, so press control and your keyboard or press the control key and hold it there. And then you press the A key or the letter A on your keyboard so that you can select all the text of your whole document. Then you go to home and you just change the font. Alternative, you can go into the font group launcher and you can change it here as well. So they want us to change it to century, century copy. So you can either go down, scroll down until you page and find it. But you can simply just type in your what you want. Century. century copy. Question Adjust the margins to be 1.27 centimeters. Always select first, then you go to layout, select margins, and um, if you can't find what you're looking here, looking for here, I would suggest you go to custom margin and you just change all the fonts. Alternatively, if you look at your options over here, you'll notice that the error is already 1.27. So 1.27 and 1, 1 comma 27 centimeters is automatically going to be an error, so you could have just used the error option as well. Right there. An insert merge fields were indicated with the 
sway brackets and change to bow. Do not tighten the brackets. Right. So what I mean by this is the following. Wherever you see the square brackets, that's an indication for you that you need to go and you need to insert merge fields. And you can only insert merge fields if you have created the data source file. So what I'm going to do here is, the first one is name, I'm going to delete name, and I'm going to go to mains, and I'm going to select recipients, and I'm going to use an existing list. Why am I using an existing list? Because I've already created a data source file earlier. I already typed in this list earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an existing list. It's going to ask me, where is this list? Where can we find this list? And remember, I saved my list on the desktop, Question campaign, and you have probably either saved yours in your student folder or in your examination So click on it and open. Immediately, once you open your data source file, you will have options or other icons becomes active. So now you're going to focus on insert merge fields because that's what you want to do. And remember, if you click on insert merge field, you come on the arrow next to field. Have all your merge fields. These are all the headings of your table that you create. So the first one that I want to is name. Alright, it looks like that. And do not type it in. You have to use insert merge field to insert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go and insert all the merge fields where they want, where they are indicating the merge fields must go. Seems like I've, I hope I've got all of them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back to my question paper and I'm going to just make sure that, I, that I've read all the instructions. Let's see. Insert merge fields where indicated with square brackets, change to bold. Alright, so what I need to go do, I need to go change all the merge fields that I've inserted. I'm going to change to bold. I'm going to try to do them all at once. So the first one I'm going to select, and I'm going to press Control on my keyboard, and I'm going to keep it there. Keep my finger on the top right So I'm going to press it, so that I am now able to actually put my other hand, my right hand, left hand, whatever hand you have left, you are going to select all the merge fields that you have edited. Please release the control button when you need to scroll and then you press the control button again when you need to select and then you release it again when you need to scroll please do that right i've selected all my in my merge field so i'm going to click on home and i'm going to click on bold right now they are all bold go back to my question Insert the following footnote in italics, font size 9, after the word monies, as indicated. Alright, so as indicated, so this means we have to go to our example, and we have to go and look at where did, where is it indicated, basically. So now we have trust monies, and there we have something, the Roman numerical I, and at the bottom we have the note that's inserted so here they give us an example so we need to do the same 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our document and we're going to click behind the word monies. Trust money should not be in bubble, money is in bubble. And also I just noticed something, address, students is on the right hand side. So we just need to make sure that we just change it so it corresponds. Now we can focus again on trust money. So I'm going to put my cursor behind the word monies. I'm going to go to not insert, I'm going to go to references. And under references, I will see insert footnote. You always start with a big um, icon, and if you have to insert a second footnote, then you can use an extra footnote. So we don't have a footnote yet, and also don't get confused between footnotes and endnotes. Footnotes generally um, get inserted at end of the document, in the footer, close to the footer of the page, and sorry, the footnote here, and an end note gets usually inserted at the end of the text, of the document text. So in this case, we want to do that at the end of the page. So we're going to click on insert footnote, and it's ins already inserted a space where I can go and insert my footnote, and also that it is a footnote but there's one problem it says number one and it shouldn't be number one it should be a letter, a letter i so to change that you have to go into the footnote this is the footnote group and you're going to go into the footnote launcher so that you can then under the format the number format so that you can change it to i apply I and now we can actually go and type in our footnote. Then our footnote says that it has to be on the text. Money is entrusted to an agent in his or her capacity as an estate agent. I'm just gonna copy this because I have the I can do that. I have a soft copy. And I'm just going to go and paste it. You on the other hand will have to go and type it. Alright, so this is one problem here. Agent needs to get a merge field. So I'm gonna go to mailings and I'm gonna change I'm gonna add agent as a merge field. Alright, done. Next question. Use the following paragraph numbering style. All numbers must start against the margin. So this one is quite tricky. What I'm going to do now is that they want us to number it 1, 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1 1 indent at 1 centimeter, indent at 1.5, indent at 1.75, indent at 2. So 1, 1.25, 1 1.75, and 2 centimeters. There's two things they're talking about indenting. And they are talking about all numbers must start against the margin. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our document. For that, I just need to make sure. Let's go to my example. So the numbering affects the following text. The heading is circumstances under which claim can be lodged. This text, these paragraphs must get numbered. So, in other words, circumstances in which a claim can be lodged, this text must get numbered. So, we're going to select this text. We are going to go to Home. And we are going to go not into bullets, not into numbering, but we're going to go next to it multi-level list. We're going to click on the arrow and here we have our options for a multi-level list and if we look carefully we will see there is the numbering that we are looking for 1.1, 1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, etc, etc. So we're going to choose this option but it's not yet what we want. So we're going to go back to our multi-level list 
chosen our order or our numbering style basically. But now we're going to go into define a new multi-deliverers. We go into it. And here we have our multi-deliverers. Now remember there's two very important instructions. Indenting and then all the numbers must start in this part. So, here we have number one, number two, number three, number four. It's basically four levels. Starting with number one, click on four so you have more options available. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you align at zero and you indent according to the instruction. First one must be indented at one centimeter. Align zero, in other words, against the margin. The second one must be aligned at zero against the margin, but indented at one point two five. The second one must be aligned against the margin, zero, but indented at one point seven five. And the fourth one must be aligned against the margin, but aligned at two centimeters. All right, so that's what you, that's what you do. And then you click on O. Okay. All right, so but nothing happened. Now what you need to do is you are going to just make sure you're going to leave number one. You're going to focus on number two, and you're just going to use your Decrease or increase indent. Indent. Remember, you said that you want number one to be indented at one centimeter. It's already one centimeter. But number two, you want to indent at 1.25 centimeters. So, what you're going to do is you're going to increase your rate. You're going to click on increase. Number two or number three, you're going to increase. And number last, you're going to increase three times. One, one point one, one point one point one, one point one point one. Just rewind this video to, to get that information. Alright, so you leave the first one, you increase your index twice, you increase your index three times. Question. Save the file as question 10. So it seems like that's the end of this question as well. So thank you students for watching. Save it as question 10 B. File save as. And you save it as question 10 B. Uh, remember you need to save it either in your exam folder or your student folder. Uh, thank you so much for watching and join me in the next video.